Hello everybody, this is Fabi from The Next Big Rush and I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what's really going on inside the company that you're invested in? Well, I can't promise you, you will know everything because honestly, that would be insider information and highly illegal. You could get arrested for that. Don't do it. What I mean is there are public bodies that must report publicly what's going on inside of public companies. In the US, uh, you have the SEC with their Edgar search facility. I don't know why they named it that. Edgar to me is a dude's name. And in Canada, you have CDAR and CDI. Don't ask me how they're properly pronounced. That's how I, I pronounce them. Deal with it. CDAR is where companies must make publicly everything that is material to their business. For example, their accounts, their financial statements, when they have drill results that change the worth or the value of the company, or when the CEO steps down, stuff like that. And on CDI, it's more about the ownership of these public companies. So such and such person owns at least 10% of which companies? That's really important to know as well. Now, let's take a step back in time and take a look at CDI and CDAR. In this episode, we're going to look at CDI. Then on the next one, stay tuned because we're going to look at CDAR. Now for Edgar, I'm sorry my American friends, but we're not going to spend much time on Edgar for now because resource stocks are mostly in Canada. We win. I'm not really Canadian, I can't say that. Okay, but a warning, you do really have to step back in time. These websites look like they belong in 1997. I'm not joking. Are you ready? Come with me. So when you come to CDI, S-E-D-I dot C-A, okay, not dot com, you are shown two different languages. Click on English. If you click on French, sorry, I can't help you. Um, when I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, so many words, right? Um, and then it just looked complicated because they're talking here about like emails and passwords and registration I'm like what you got to register just to check information out that's supposed to be public well no they, they just have a really bad interface go over here top right hand corner not as registered um, you can just go to access public filings okay it's kind of hidden I don't know why insider information issuer information and summary reports let's click on each one of them to check out what they mean view insider information so here you can search by insider number unless you know sort of the registration number of that insider and an insider is really somebody who owns i believe 10 percent or more of a public company in canada so it could be a person or it could be a fund or a company that owns that share obviously unless you're the fund itself you won't know the number if the insider is an individual search by entering insider name Hmm, let's take somebody here inside their family name. Rule. Do we think Rick Rule is under Rule? I don't know. Let's search. David Allen Rule. Rich Arthur Richards Rule. Okay, I. Uh, Carlsbad. This is where Rick Rule uh, works. So this is probably him, right? Arthur Richard. Hold on. Arthur Richards. He's not really Rick. I am very disappointed. Sprott. Okay, that has to be him or like a twin of some sort. Next. Okay. Here you have some information about this person. Yeah, that's definitely Rick Rule. He's an, a part owner of Sprott Resource Lending Corp. Now, here's the important bit. Date the insider became an insider of this issuer, 2003, whatever, whatever. Date the insider ceased being an insider of this issuer, 2013. Now, this is important because this just means that his holding in Sprott is now less than 10%. That doesn't mean that he sold everything. It doesn't mean that he sold anything. Maybe he was diluted out of his position. Maybe he did sell everything, okay? Then you have Sprott Inc., which is another Sprott company with the same sort of information. Then you have Quest Investment Corporation and the same sort of information. Okay, but Rick Rule doesn't usually just buy stuff under his name, right? I mean, some of it is through KCR and some of it might be through another company. Let's go on and take a look at issuer information. 
issue or number, which you probably won't know, but issue or name for sure you will know because it's, that's just the name of the company. A company that I've mentioned here is Ivanhoe. So let's take a look at that search. Ivanhoe Energy, Ivanhoe Mines. That's it. Hit on next. By the way, remember to click on the stuff that actually says next and not just new search. Yeah, I know the layout is all wrong. Ivanhoe Mines, you have a little bit of information here, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, well, but it doesn't tell you who owns all the stock in Ivanhoe, does it? No, it doesn't. In order to do that, you gotta come over here to view summary reports and go to insider information by issuer. At least that's just the easier way that I found it. Click on next, issuer name. Ivanhoe search, Ivanhoe mines. There we go. All right, cool. Now we have a lot of information here. We have the name of the person, insider relationship, what they do, and cease to be insider, not a applicable or applicable. So that means that they're still in it as far as I'm concerned. Now here you have the common shares, you have options, you have rights restricted share units, which I don't know what it means, but it's all the stuff that the people have in this company. So you have all these people who are at least 10% owners of Ivanhoe. Mark Faber is an owner of Ivanhoe. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Mark Faber is... The guy who publishes the doom, gloom, boom, boom, doom, gloom report or something of that nature. He's well known. He's always on TV saying that the world is going to end. Very rich, very smart and very successful. Him on here is a very good sign. Doesn't mean you're going to make money, but it means there might be a higher chance that you will. Robert Friedland, the promoter. Okay, here's all the details. When the shares became his and how many shares he's getting. This is a ton of shares. Like you can make a swimming pool of these shares and just swim in them. A lot of other names here, a bunch of people I don't really know, a ton of people. Now you will notice that there are more than 10 people here and how can it be that they all own 10% of the same company? If there's more than 10 people, it makes no sense. Well, yes and no, because this doesn't just include the shares, it includes options and warrants and, and whatnot. And some of these people have ceased to be insiders. So they might own, I don't know, 1% of the company or 0.1% of the company. It varies a lot. Okay, so basically that's how you find out who owns what. Now, something that's kind of important is to know through which entity the person you follow is investing. For example, take somebody like Ross Beatty. I don't know if Ross Beatty buys stuff under his name, do you? I mean, I don't know. I'm not that close to him, but let's check this out. Oh, okay. He has everything under his name, Ross J. Beatty. <laughs> Now, here you can see all, oh my goodness, so many companies that he's uh, an insider of. Altera Power, Amerigo Landfield, Arena, Augusta, Delradian, Frontier, Galantis, Kootenay, Global, so many of them. Just just so many. Awesome. Yep. And if you hit next, you can sort of see uh, a summary of what Mr. Beatty has been up to these last few years. Now, here's how I like to play things. I see something like this, Northern Peru Copper Corp. You have to dig deep and do a little bit more research than just looking at this. But from what I can see, this is something that he might still be involved in. I like to see the opening balance be a little bit more recent. So let's pretend that this is like a 2015. This, this would suit better. If you know that somebody like Ross Beatty is putting his name on a copper company in 2015 and you think is got uh, copper is going to turn around but the that particular company has not taken off in price yet i particularly would try to figure out if they're holding this as a shell company and plan on doing something to it in that case if i think there is a chance that they will use the the company with a very low price low market cap to invest in copper and to lift the, the price, then I would buy it before Russ Beatty comes out and says, hey, we're doing this and this and this with Northern Peru Copper Corp, you know? Uh, if you're a little bit early, then 
in a bull market it's very easy money now don't do what i'm saying i'm not a registered financial advisor or anything like that but this could happen i mean look at anfield anfield where is it let's search here anfield gold corp um i own anfield so disclaimer 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 he became an insider a couple of years ago and this was uh, actually anfield nickel okay price wasn't going anywhere it was very small and they turned it into Anfield Gold Corp. And now they're actually doing business with this. Now, a shell isn't necessarily a bad thing. When you hear shell companies, you think, oh my gosh, this is like Panama Papers and dodgy stuff. No, it just means that they have a company that's already registered and is already a public company with all the filings, with all the legal work done, but it's just not trading. It's like a dormant company that keeps up its payment to the stock exchange and keeps on going but it's kind of um, a dormant company in the sense that nobody's really doing much with it they're they're just keeping up the company without making any money or investing in it when the tide turns like you're seeing now in the gold market we have the beginning of a bull market i believe then you see big guys like ross Beatty use some of his already existing shell corporations and then they change it into something better they pull this really good management team they do a private placement of tens of millions of dollars they go out and buy assets all under a name that he already owns does that make sense yes it does so keep your eyes peeled for any of these names that have not moved and make your own decision okay basically that's it for CDI. that's uh, where you really get the meaty stuff and this is part of my strategy and how I invest. That's it really. Thank you very much for watching. Hit like if you like this video. If you don't like it, don't hit dislike. Why would you do that? That's so rude. And subscribe to this channel because there's a lot more coming your way. Take care.